I'm intrigued by this issue of state responsibility versus federal responsibility versus institutional responsibility. And I guess one casting of that is states post the Morrill Act, the land grants, creation of public, they saw it as being in the interest of the state to educate their own populace. Increasingly, um, you enter into a national labor market. Capital and people and talent are mobile. So if you're sitting at a state level, you can say, should we be educating students? How many of them stay here? And how much does that investment actually redound to the net value and prosperity of our state? And to what extent is it really a national issue? So I think there's been sort of a certainly a gravitation away. I would agree with your point that the, uh, uh, the low cost, uh, everybody pays almost nothing model does not work under pressure. It's better to have, in effect, not be subsidizing those who can pay when you don't have the tax base for it. But I think we're going to deal with this tension between the state and the federal role. And if it moves to the federal role, then I begin to worry it just falls into that huge deficit we have at the, at the federal level. And, and then it will become another Target. Well, that's it. I mean, I don't know which level of government you you turn to in this environment that we're in. I mean, in terms of who's got any spare change, and uh, and certainly one of the big changes that's occurred in the last 30 or 40 years has been the a shift to a, you know I'm talking to the preaching to the choir here. I mean, you all know this: the shift away from the notion of the public externality, spillover, the you know the publicity of higher education into a model that says it's mostly private benefit and uh, and therefore we ought to charge the student more. Um, and the institutions played into that. I mean, we, we, when labor markets were good, we were counting the private benefits of jobs, the salaries, et cetera. And so we're a little hypocritical if we deny that. Um, the federal state thing is really messy. Um, <laughs> I remember back at Berkeley in the uh, late 60s, the UC system wanted to build two new medical centers. And everything, nothing would, and it was going to be to serve the populace of California with doctors. You know, we'll raise our own, we'll grow our own doctors. And one of the bright analysts in the system office, in the system, uh, system office, discovered that what determines where people locate is their residency, where they do a residency, much more than where they went to medical school. And he started talking about that within the UC system, and uh, he got fired <laughs> because they wanted to build two medical schools. And they <coughs> my colleague Sarah Turner has done some very close look at, at this issue of where do people where do people go after they get their degree, and, and you know, with, with the bachelor's degree, it's highly mobile, as you point out. There's no guarantee. And yet you have things like the Georgia Hope Scholarship, which was premised in part on we keep our kids in Georgia, they, you know, they go to college in Georgia, they'll settle in Georgia. They'll, they'll settle where there are jobs. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you can take Southside Virginia, which is a desperate part of the country, and they keep saying if we could just build a university there, we'd solve our problems. Well, I mean, if they don't get jobs coming in, and some of this is synergistic, but if you don't get jobs coming in, you could educate them there, and they'll settle you. They'll go, they'll go across into North Carolina or go north. But it's a matter, I mean, we have created the biggest, most complicated way of financing this enterprise. We, we've made it very hard to have a sensible conversation because we all zero in on one piece of it. And that there's, it's like whack-a-mole, there are all these other pieces that are moving off, off the scene. And you can't forget those at any one time. 